Slide. I need my money, nigga. Slide. Four, bitch. Slide. Keep you know, best condition, most professional, unselfish, toughest, nastiest, dislike team in the NBA. We didn't care about it. That was our identity, and that's who we were. What up, Knicks Nation? Welcome back to the Sheer Brilliance Podcast. It's your boy Sheer. I'm your host. And you already know, we're first to many and second to none. When it comes to news, team moves, and interesting views about our New York Knicks. For those of you who are returning for another video, my SB community, I appreciate you. Welcome back, baby. Let's talk about our Knicks. Oh, and if you're here for the first time, I appreciate you as well. Two things, like and subscribe this video, all right? Or, I know it to be true, if you're the ops, well, pull up then. Argue with me. These points. What's your prediction for I'll fight? give you one prediction for prediction? this fight. Yes, prediction. Pain. Exactly. And just a reminder that you're rocking with the best still. I am the greatest. Now let's get into it. Welcome to my channel. Before we start, you already know, help build this movement. Pause real quick, subscribe, and like this video. At the end, leave a comment below. This content is for you and anyone else who's a fan of basketball. Friend or foe, we want the smoke. And the smoke is exactly what we're covering today, courtesy of the Knicks Media Day. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the sound of the New York media cheering because they finally made it into the clubhouse to speak with the Knicks players. All right? But in this video, I want to discuss four New York Minute overviews. The New York Minute means it might be longer than a minute. Okay? But we're going to discuss four players. Julius Randle. Derek Rose, Jalen Brunson, and R.J. Barrett, Barrett in their interviews at this year's Media Day. It's exciting times. 100% healthy, good vibes, good intentions all the way around. Let's discuss it. Okay, let's kick it off with Julius. <clears throat> My first impression of Julius' Media Day interviews was that he was really making an honest and conscientious effort to have a clean energy and a clean spirit. Now, sometimes it appeared to be too much effort to be funny, lighthearted, laughing, but I'll take it versus what happened last year throughout the entirety of the year. All right. It was his attitude and his body language that had fans ready to run him out of town, amongst other things. So he seems to be focused on positivity. And I like that. All right. It's making me wish he has a great bounce back year, actually. All right. But on top of that, good start i was really impressed by the ownership that he had taken about his attitude and his approach to this upcoming year he talked a little bit about wanting to be a better person and a better teammate to me that shows reflection and introspection and that is all any of us can do to get better all right he also slimmed down and talked about getting back to basics and i laughed at this because when asked about the reason he did so he said he got to keep up with the young boys running up and down the court. Now, I thought that was a nod to Obi, like, I see you, young, young cat. I also like that he said that Tibbs was texting, calling him throughout the summer. This shows that he continued to feel supported by the staff and the organization. All right. Now, some of us may not like to hear that, but it's important. It's important to this generation of players and players who talk to each other in free agency. But also... Tibbs mentioned earlier that players will need to accept adjusted roles in the future and staying in contact with Julius and being clear about what is expected from him is super important. But lastly, Julius took this moment to speak glowingly of Evan Fournier. I almost cringed because it felt like a public endorsement type of vibe. It was definitely him pushing for Evan to start, but it doesn't matter who starts. It's how many minutes they play. So Julius I hope you are better than the MIP season, Julius, and we get this thing back on track. All right. Next New York Minute overview discusses our backup point guard, Derek Rose. 
My first impression of Derek's media day interviews was that he was really Derek Rose, the OG. All right. This man walked in. He had a shirt off. He was cursing like a mug. He was talking about wanting to be good again. All right. Derek Rose is actually one of our most valuable players for his skill and his ability, as well as his mentorship and his communication from coach to players. I like the story he told about Tibbs challenging him to drop to drop some weight. For Tibbs to know Derek's eating habits and challenge him to come back better, apparently it works. He knows the buttons to push with D Rose. A healthy D Rose is a dangerous D Rose, all right. And I think sometimes we take that for granted. He helped lead us to the playoffs two years ago. So many times that year, he actually had the lead talking about what he was doing at MSG. I want that back. All right. I also like that he's been progressively giving giving zero fucks since returning to New York when talking to the media. All right. That man's been cursing, although still clearly, although he still clearly communicates full responses to questions. He's been talking like a guy from Chicago or New York, and I'm here for that. Okay. We need that type of energy for the teammates to follow. All right. But most of all, D Rose, man. D. Rose has made it clear that he wants to win and to have a former MVP on our team that knows how to get there. That's the secret weapon that we have. All right. So I'm loving that. The next New York Minute overview discusses our new starting point guard, Jalen Brunson. All right. Let me start by saying I love the energy he's bringing and that the team is giving him back. All right. And watching the interviews. It was saying a lot for him to have connected with a few of them to run at the pro-ams and open gyms when he first got here. All right. So I love that as well. But what I noticed was the little playful banter that he has with RJ. During media day, photo shoots, I saw he jokingly left uh, RJ hanging when RJ tried to give him dap. He accidentally hit him in the face with the ball at a, at a light pass, a no-look pass that he threw. You want to see that type of chemistry. Right. In terms of his presentation, to me, he seems thoughtful. He seems measured and media trained. He's also not afraid to pause between remarks to let the media fill in whatever they want to assume. And I love that. I think that he may have also tipped their hand a little bit about the type of offense we can expect to see this year. When he said expect, he expects there to be more read and reacts to the Knicks offense I think that's key. Remember, that was a good portion of what Tibbs had the confidence to let Derrick Rose do in Chicago. Also here, both point guards have that ability. They have an above average high level ability to do that. He further solidified that insinuation by mentioning Mitch Robb. He said, if Mitch Robb sets screens and rolls, you know, Mitch is active and fast. We can make this happen. So I loved how a reporter also compared Derek to Derek, uh, Jalen to Derek Harper. But Jalen is a master of the pivot. And like a good point guard, he brought it back to the point of him not being the savior for the team, but taking it one play at a time. And you love that. Lastly, the final New York Minute overview. Let's discuss our, uh, our starting small forward, RJ Barrett. I like that RJ mentioned something I've said in my videos. When the offseason hits, RJ disappears completely from social media. It was a bit more difficult for him to do that this summer because he signed the extension. When he was about when he was also asked about what parts of his game he was able to work on, he replied he adds one or two things to his game every year. Maple Mamba. All right. I love that. But he simply summed it up by saying that he aims to be better than he was in each previous year. <clears throat> but also showing his growth, RJ did specify what he worked on, decision making, free throws, and his ability to finish. All right. Lastly, when asked about Jalen Brunson, he tipped his cap to him, calling him a winner and hailing Jalen's po uh, poise and, and clutchness. All right. So I'm excited about this new team. You know, the possible tweaks that could lead to positive uncharted waters this season. All right. What do you say? There we have it. Knicks Nation, let's go.
I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Media Day was successful. Uh, I'm about to check out that Alan Hahn CP video. But if you have any questions or concerns, uh, leave them below. Leave them in the comments box below. And until next time, keep in mind, same thing applies to our team that applies to our lives. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Nick fans, we are here in this training camp. And next is preseason. And we got next. I'm out. Shit, bro, this podcast. Man, oh, my. Yeah, stop playing with Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop playing with me, bro. Yeah, you know. We ain't playing with. This is Dude, 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 Dude. I want all the smoke. <laughs>